Hello, my name is Robert Feldman, and I am a psychology professor and dean of the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. As an educator and researcher examining the factors that lead to college student success, I am acutely aware that large numbers of entering first-year students across the country are unready for the rigors of college. For a variety of reasons, they enter college lacking the academic skills that will allow them to face the challenges of college. In order to maximize our students' success, we, as educators and as a nation, need to accept the responsibility to help these students realize the many opportunities of higher education. This means offering them the help they need to succeed in college. This is where developmental education, remedial education at the college level, comes in. Fully 34 percent of college freshmen need at least one developmental education course in reading, writing, and or math. That's a huge number. But developmental education, as it is currently implemented, is not an adequate answer. Only 17% of students who need help in reading and 27% of students who need help in math ultimately go on to earn their bachelor's degree. We're losing the others. Good developmental programs focus not only on specific academic needs in a single topical area. In addition, they also teach more general student success and study skills providing the support that entering first-year students need to help them cope with deficiencies in study strategies and other pragmatic skills they'll need to be successful in college. By integrating study skills with basic subject areas such as math and reading, educators can help students learn strategies that will help them in all their academic activities and eventually in their future careers. One thing that really distinguishes developmental students, I think, is experience. Um, developmental students tend to have less experience with the academic environments um, and with the real, you know, sort of hidden agenda of school. Um, I think part of what we do as developmental instructors is help teach students how to be students, you know, help kind of deconstruct the classroom, deconstruct the ideas or the, you know, the things that one does in order to be a successful college student. Um, most often, what I find with developmental students is that their abilities are not that different from uh, your regular transfer student who comes into college ready for transfer level classes. The big difference really, I think, is in the amount of experience they have and sometimes in the amount of reticence they have because some of those students just simply don't feel comfortable yet in that environment and need some time to adjust to it um, and also need some encouragement and some support. Uh, oftentimes, I think students who have that support are just as successful as students who, uh, who come in at the transfer level. Once they have an idea, I think, of what the expectations are and exactly how to approach assignments, how to approach instructors. And once they get a lot more experience practicing, once they do that, they're good to go. My area of interest is persistence and retention in developmental math students. Retention and persistence are very important in higher education because the research tells us that being successful in developmental mathematics classes is strongly correlated with persisting to a degree or certificate. So we know that our classes are a critical link in the process of, of getting to those goals. I'm interested in persistence and retention just because I know that my students struggle with it. And if I can make a difference as a classroom teacher, that helps me feel like I'm making, that my job's important. I continue to stay very interested in new research and, and new talks about persistence and retention because I know it's critically important for my students. I also really get energized by trying new things and so when you try something and students, and it works, and you see students get it, and keep it, retain it, as they go from one day to the next. You go, wow, that's really cool. What else could I try? How could I change this? Um, what can I do differently in some other area to make that happen? Ideas about persistence and retention have changed me from being a teacher that just does mathematics to a teacher that thinks about the whole student 
and the, the ways that I can uh, integrate students into the community, the culture of college as a whole. It also, I, I tend to, it goes with my personality, but I tend to do group work and pair work. Not all, I lecture, um, but I try to look for active learning opportunities because I know that that helps students feel to make connections between each other and with me. The Virginia Western Community College Developmental English 07 ENF1 STV 108 course design originated with the integrated reading and writing vision of Dr. John Capps and it continued to flourish under the leadership of Dr. Elizabeth Wilmer. This unique design represents the epitome of forward thinking as it pairs the integrated language immersion model with the additional dimensions of structured assistive advising as well as an embedded college survival skills course. Beginning as an eight-credit co-taught integrated reading and writing course and expanding over eight years into a nine-credit learning community with a half-credit special assignment for assistive advising, English 07 SDV 108 became a collaborative effort between Brenda Ashcraft and Kathy Boylan as they continuously tweaked and added components to address the social and emotional needs of this population. This best practices developmental model continued to expand with additional input from the student services perspective as Brooke Ferguson provided the framework for an embedded SDV and designed the instructor course shell. Additionally, Ann Moser's expertise provided direction as digital and writing tutorial lab components moved to the design to a preferred single instructor model. The benefits of peer education added another dimension to this design as classroom student groups were structured based on individual learning style preferences. This component became an important retention piece as student friendships blossomed and students learned from one another. Moving into the personal arena of building relationships and considering the broader goals of continuous student learning and success in college and in life, this developmental English model embraces the individual learner socially, emotionally, and academically, while still challenging the instructor to think broader and to move beyond the perceived limits of just content and skills. exciting time for developmental studies um, and for to be a, a developmental educator uh, because so many so many things are being challenged um, with the work that we're doing uh, with learning communities and we've seen so many amazing uh, benefits from working with students uh, in that uh, in a, with using that intervention but at the same time we are always looking at our, at our data you know what is working with learning communities what is working in other ways what isn't working um, and I'm seeing that uh, through the research that is being done nationwide, this is a hot topic issue and this is something that people are always kind of interested in thinking about, you know, how, how, how can we look at developmental education in a, in a better way or how do we better serve our students um, because uh, you know, data often reflects that developmental students are marginalized right, and are not often doing as well as we'd like them to do. They don't often succeed in the, in the ways that we want them to succeed, um, at least uh, according to some of the numbers, you know, so how we have to look at that, we have to address what works in our programs, what doesn't work, and so um, our jobs are always changing. Uh, the way we think about what we do is always changing. We can never really get comfortable because we're always thinking about ways to get better.